Will I be back in insurance? Maybe. As you know, Allstate is a, a close community. Like, they help each other. And what I learned quickly when I went to fitness, it's the opposite. The community itself at Triumph is amazing. Fitness studios outside of Triumph do not want to support each other in any manner. That was a red flag in itself. And then I started to realize the pictures on Instagram and, and the, the money flow of fitness was fake. Welcome to another episode of the A1 Experience. I've got my good friend, Mr. Justin Harker Road here in town for the CWC conference. Justin, welcome. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. It's an honor to have you, bro. I've known you for, for many, many years, and uh, I'm excited to get to know you a little bit more because I don't think we've ever talked more than like five minutes. Nope. So. Quick text, quick <laughs> conversation, that's it. Yeah, man. But I've always respected you. Thank you. You've always been a respected figure in the insurance industry. I've just seen you around at conferences. I remember seeing you at an ASA years ago before I even knew who you were. Yeah. Tattoos. I remember the tattoos. And if you guys don't know Justin, <clears throat> Justin started as a scratch Allstate agent in 2007. He grew into a mega agency, uh, winning multiple top tier awards and, and just really doing a great job. I think you co-founded one of those companies, Lightspeed? Follow-up tool. Follow-up tool. Yep. Forgive me. And then in 2020, he sold his agency to pursue his dream of launching Triumph, a boutique fitness studio experience. And he never stopped coaching. Mm -hmm. Like you, you still remained in the uh, coaching business of coaching insurance agents and helping them take things to the next level, which leads him to where he's at today, about to launch one of his newest endeavors, um, which I'll have him share, The Standard Playbook, which we'll get into. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm excited. For those of my audience that don't know who you are, just give a quick run through of, of your story. Yeah. So father of three, two twin boys, 13 years old, 10-year-old uh, princess, Lily, and then married to Karina for 14 years now. So we'll be 14 years 25th of this month. So I started Scratch, like you said, when I was 21 years old. 21. Um, it was me and one other one other guy, and as you've been here a long time, so back then the numbers were small but big to those people, and now yeah. the world has expanded like crazy. Follow-up tool was a passion project because we saw a need inside of agencies, as you know. CRMs are a struggle sometimes, so we wanted to make that simple. We exited that in 2019, so we were blessed to do that within seven months um, from creation to exit. And then, yeah, sold the agency in 2020 to open up a, a gym in the middle of COVID, which was a, a novel idea that I learned very quickly. And we had that for four, almost four years, and then exited that in January of this year to focus on, on coaching. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So you come with a wealth of experience from, people call it a franchise. We know it's not a franchise, but it's a pretty similar model to running, to building something from scratch. Mm -hmm. Thin air, right? Nothing. So one of the funniest things I wanted to say was you started an agency in 07, which is pretty much the, the great recession. <laughs> right. And then you start a fitness studio in 2020. I'm kind of nervous about... Greater recession. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> I'm kind of nervous about like what's about to happen economically right now. True. You're starting something new. Thank you. Thank you for that vote of confidence. Yeah, I appreciate that. No, and it's not in you. I never you. connected that, but yeah. It's not in you, but it's it in the be. world. Like, black swan events right. happen when you start businesses. Yes. So. Yeah. Crap. Now that, now, that, now that we discovered that. So, election. and there's an election. Yeah. So, who knows what's going to be next. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah, COVID was, it was a story. So, like, we opened May 25th of 2020. So, we, we got delayed because we were supposed to open in March. And then we opened in May, and then riots started to begin, and... We were targeted at Triumph because we were, we're gold, and the word Triumph looks like what? Trump. Trump. So, like, we got a direct message saying that they were coming for us, and we had to, So, two weeks into opening, we had to tarp, 30-foot tarp, board up our windows. 85 cops came that day in the parking lot to protect our building. It was wild. Sheesh. So, that was tough. But we survived. Found yeah. profitability, went to scale, didn't do the franchise, thankfully, for um, personal reasons, and then sold it to, to a coach that was in the, in the studio already to keep the culture. That was the biggest thing for us. Yeah. So it is, the, the boutique fitness space is different than any business I've ever experienced where there's this connection that is deep from the community. So making sure that the culture stayed intact was by far the biggest decision for Korean and I to make sure it was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, take care of your people, take right. care of the community. You guys are still gonna go there? We still coach there. Yeah. So I still coach classes. Karina lives there, but I'm down to like one or two classes a week so I can focus on coaching. But the, the amount of time it goes into doing a fitness class and building the playlist and music and all of that thing is very time consuming for the 45 minute experience that you get. But that's also what makes it special. Yeah. So you never quite let go of insurance. And I remember 
I remember seeing you at a conference and and you were telling me about you know starting the starting Triumph, mm-hmm. and then you were like nothing beats insurance, <laughs> nothing beats it. And I guess you know on the other side of the fence, talk to us about talk to us about what it was like to I guess create something that you always wanted to create, but still I guess being connected to insurance agents and coaching something that you've always been you know passionate about. Yeah. And then also I guess another question is, do you plan on once you're not compete, non solicit, all stuff is good to go. You <laughs> we're get back in, we're in almost there. Space? We're yeah. almost there. The playbook is my my passion now. Will I be back in insurance? Maybe. The coaching thing came back in twenty twenty one. So like Craig started doing this elite coaching thing, um, and I basically texted him and said, "Hey, I'm coming to Tau. Like, let's talk." And that, that's how that evolved from that because I missed all of my people. Mm-hmm. And like as you know, Allstate is a, a close community. Like they help each other. Mm-hmm. And what I learned quickly when I went to fitness, it's the opposite. So like all of the things you see on Instagram and, and the community itself at Triumph is amazing. Fitness studios outside of Triumph do not want to support each other in any manner, which really? is the opposite of what I came from with Allstate, where we all work together and try to help each other. So that was a red flag in itself. And then I started to realize the pictures on Instagram and, and the, the money flow of fitness was fake. So when you when you break it down from a business perspective, the, the margins are so small. And Insurance is not, as we know, like insurance can be fun. So I missed it tremendously. And will I go back to owning an agency someday? But I feel like God's put me in place for playbook now. Yeah. Yeah. What were some of the things that happened over the last couple of years that, that got you to, to want to build this? Yeah. So I've been coaching since 21. There was, it's very, every, everything's a business related conversation. And I've been also inside of a group called warrior since 2016 and just quick background on what that is. You got to own a business, have a family, be married, um, or you can't be involved inside of this group because they focus on body, being, balance, and business. So we focus on health. We focus on our relationship with God and our family and our business because all of those things end up correlating together. If your house is a shit show, your business is going to be the same thing, right? So when I realized those are the types of conversations I wanted to have more often than just, hey, what's going on with the agency? What's the problem? The playbook started to come into play, but I couldn't do it with Triumph. Triumph was so time consuming. An amazing team of 30 people probably, I don't know how many is there now, but just constant emotional struggles for me. And if we go back to the agency, I had like, I don't know, 10 dudes and two girls total. And then we go to fitness and it's 27 girls and three dudes. So like learning how to be a therapist was part of the skill I had to figure out. Like you're crying, let me act like I care, which I do care, but it was a difficult transition for me to deal with. And then when I, when I thought to myself, I want to do the playbook, or the playbook wasn't even a thing. I want to get into that type of coaching. What am I going to do? And then if we fast forward to 2023, hardest year of our lives from a family perspective. My kids went through anxiety like I've never seen because of COVID. Like they were scared to be sick. So the first quarter of 23 was chaos for us where I couldn't even focus on anything. And then we fast forward to issues inside of Triumph that I self-created by by caring too much about employees, which gave me an issue with my wife. And then I had to make a choice to say, this is what matters. And to come full circle and say, look, I'll I'll do whatever I need to do to get rid of this business in the right way to make sure the culture stays, but to make sure that I can focus on my family. And that's what like the focus for 2024 for me is my body, making sure I'm getting my health right because I gotta live for a long time and my my balance, making sure my, my wife and kids are good. Insurance agents, what is every agency's highest closing lead source without fail? Personal referrals. What if I told you I could help you turbocharge the frequency in which you got personal referrals? In the last five years, I've written over 5,000 items and 3.5 million in premium from inbound organic sources and it cost me nothing. How? Because posting on social media is free. If you want to turn your agency into a referral machine, then go to nicksocket.com slash creators and sign up for the Insurance Creators Mastermind, where me and my team will meet with you and your team twice a month to help you with something that no other agency is doing. Imagine having the guidance, the ideas, the trends, and the strategies that actually work in converting more business for your agency. Go to nicksocket.com slash creators for more. Now, back to the show. I like what you posted the other day, and I kind of put it in quotation marks and I've kind of, it's just been like ringing in my head, but that uh, it's all connected. Yeah. And, and it is, but not a lot of people talk about it. Right. They don't want to talk about the, the truth, which is if, and now I'm getting on phone calls and I'm saying, 
how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. The agency is, I'm like, well, how are you doing? And I'm like, what's going on with you? Well, I'm tired. Why are you tired? Because I'm not eating right or I'm not working out or my wife kept me up all night because I was fighting. Like, those are the real conversations that I think people need to have, but they just don't because they think transactionally this is a business call, so I need to talk business. But then it goes in one ear out the other because they got to fight, they got to go home and deal with that they didn't handle last night. Um, and then all the way to the connection to God. Like, I am discovering more about myself in the last 11 months than I ever had in my life. 13 months, not 11. I started praying every day. And it's called prayer stacking that we learned inside of Warrior. Tw- uh, January 30th, not January, July 30th of 23 was my first one. I've never missed a day since. And it's changed my life completely to the point where I posted the other day, the Bible for me is my business book. And like when I have things I have to go through, I can go to that and I will find a lesson in that and extract it so fast that normally I, I used to go to Grant Cardone and all of these books to try to find the answer. And it's changed a lot for me. And that's kind of where I'm trying to take this thing. Yeah. It's been a goal of mine to read the Quran because I was born Muslim. Yeah. Or my dad's Muslim. I was raised Muslim, not born Muslim. I was raised Muslim. I was technically baptized Catholic, so I'm all screwed up. Technically baptized <laughs> Catholic, raised Muslim come to Vegas, and I start going to churches. Mm-hmm. That's actually where I meet Randall. I start learning about Christianity, but I'm just like this confused individual. Yeah. It's the first time I'm actually even talking about it. They're very conflicting, but it's almost like the same thing, Christian and Islam. They're mm-hmm. very, like conflicting in the sense of like, you know, the Trinity, and then God is one in Islam and all this stuff. But as I try to read the Bible... I'm like telling my wife, because my wife has read it, it's just pretty hard to read. And she's like, well, you need to ask, you know, for the Holy Spirit to help you understand it. I'm like, what? (laughs) Like, I can't just read it. Like, can I buy the, 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 the English version, the, the, the broken down version? Because it's harder to understand this. And, but I guess there is a, a method to that. (laughs) I mean, there's, there's many versions and like my religion and my relationship with Jesus and God is two different things to me. And that's just me. So, like, and I, I learned something three weeks ago. I was in California, and Garrett said something. Who He's the guy who, who created Warrior. And he was talking about the Bible itself is a, a group of men who wrote down what they heard from God or what they felt from God and wrote it a, on a piece of paper, and then it, got, it became a book. If I go and I read that and I feel like I'm hearing something from God, there's no difference in me writing it down and them writing it down. It's just my scripture. Right. So I get to choose what I want to say to him. I get to to receive what I feel like I receive, right? I don't, I don't hear some weird voice in the background. Like, not not right. anything like that. But it's just as powerful if I look at it that way. I don't need to look at a, the book of Mark and go, well, he said this, so I need to adhere to this. Right. If I hear something different, I feel just as con- convicted that that's what that is, which is powerful for me. So like when I go to Bible Stack every morning, I pick a group of verses, and I just, and the next question that happens inside of our stack process is, what do you see? What are three things that you see? So you, sometimes I have to sit there, because like you said, some of this shit is hard to read. Like, you're like, what are you even saying right now? What did I just read? And then you get like a, the brother of Joseph and the brother, like, it's just too much jargon. But you got to be strategic about what you're trying to do. And there's a, there's a Bible called the businessbible.com. This dude created this Bible that is structured around business. So on the back of the book, it references like tithing, of course, um, but business and leadership. And then it gives you verses to go reference that. And they're highlighted in gold. So like you can extract lessons specific to what you're looking for. Okay. And that's kind of changed things for us. Interesting. And it's, it's usually like... Men, or men, I'm saying that because that's where I was at, go at, we're, we're trying to produce, right? Production is our, our target. Production is supporting our wives and other things with our wives. And every man wants to find a book that can help them produce more money. Grant Cardone, like, I'll reference that all day. The moment that we put business in front of the word Bible, all of a sudden we're like, oh, maybe I'll read it. Because, like, we connect that to production. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the genius marketing of that side. And it's true. Like, the moment that I saw that, that Bible, I was like, okay, I'm, maybe I'll open this thing up. And, and then I know I can reference something with team management that I need to attack or for another for a, a client or something. Yeah. The answers are in there. It's just a matter of figuring out what you see. And every book is basically a spinoff of, of it. Right. You notice, like, Everything. you're not recognizing that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's everywhere. As a man thinketh. Yep. Uh, all that. Yep. It's, it's, it's basically spinoffs. So I guess take me back to, before you got into insurance, take me back to, you know, I guess, what were you doing before insurance? What was your life like? Were you involved in fitness? I was were blacking you... out drunk, man. I was 19 years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, my parents owned pizza shops. 
So I come from a family of, of business owners. So I knew I wanted to do that. But right before I, I walked into a mortgage company and there was an Allstate agent there. And my mom worked there and he like heard that I was trying to figure out what to do with my life. And that's how he talked to me about opening a scratch agency. So that's okay. how it happened. But I was delivering pizzas and I was working at Lincoln Financial pushing keyboard buttons okay. for $10 an hour. And that was the game. And then back then in 2007, you needed five grand like in your bank account, which I called my grandma and I said, can I borrow five grand? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So, so it transferred to my account and then, I don't know, what, what year did you open? 2016. Okay, so like we used to have to go to Chicago, did you? Yeah. Yeah, so like I live in Fort Wayne, it's four hours. So I had no money, so I would drive to Farmington and then drive home back to my apartment every day for two wow. weeks and then I would drive to Chicago. Got two speeding tickets, it ended up costing me more money probably in the end <sighs> with gas, but gas back then was 90 cents. Yeah, affordable. Yeah, but yeah, that was, that was what I was doing. I was doing nothing. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I was in college, dropped out with nine credit hours to graduate, but I never needed it again. Yeah. What were some of the standards that you weren't keeping up with personally that made you draw a line in the sand and was like, I just got to be better? Um, like that, I guess that got you to this point. I give a lot of credit to Warrior. Like 2016, when I saw a video that Garrett had done, and it connected me to the point where I felt like I was disconnected from my wife because I was so focused on business. And then to apply that to my kids, it just, it just made me realize that I was so focused on growing the business that everything else was falling apart. And my health was down. I was overweight. Like all, the, all of those things, all the stories everybody talks about. But when I heard that it's possible to attack everything at one time every single day, that's when, that, that was when it got drawn. I do the same thing every single day. Like my wife gets a note handwritten on the on the table for her to come in the morning to see and it's just some BS. Thank you for doing the dishes. I love you very much. Like it doesn't have to be something extravagant. My kids get notes. That makes sure that I put stuff in their love bucket on a daily basis. I work out, I track my macros. Like that's my daily core for for body. I do my prayer stacking, I do my Bible stacking, that's my point there. My business, I read a book. Like it's a, it's a way of breaking this down and and we describe it as hitting singles. If you hit a single every day, what happens in 4 days? You you score. And then every single day you score. But everyone always tries to hit these home runs and find these silver bullets and oh Zempic and take a bunch of pills and like all of these things instead of just putting in the work. And that's what I want to do with the standard to make people realize if you commit to something and follow through then you can do it again, and you can do it again, you can do it again. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the biggest issue. Yeah, when when you are starting something new, which, you know, for me, for example, it's, <clears throat> I just had a baby, and nice. um, thank you, she's two months, and it's going up fast, <laughs> yeah. it's like happening already before my eyes, and I also launched a new community, mm -hmm. the Insurance Creators, and I have found myself you know, a conversation that me and my wife had before before the baby was, like, you got to stop doing these, like, late nights at the office, you know? I, I'd love to, st like, have dinner with you, and we go to sleep at a reasonable time, and then business happens. And, like, I'm pretty sure I'm asking you because I think you've been down this road. And then I justify it by saying, well, it, it, it's probably just a season. Like, it's not probably. Like, I know it's just a season. Like, my agency needs to get recalibrated. We're sucking right now. I launched this new community. I don't know why I did at this time, right? I just <laughs> it felt right. Like I'm just being led, right? Yep. And I, I know that it's a season because I value so much traveling. I value just spending time with family, but I do know that there are going to be some seasons. And I don't know if that's a bad, a bad thing or if I'm just lying to myself that because I feel like there can always be something there's always something that we're going to be working on. There's always something we can improve on. And so what would you say to that guy? I mean, I think you, you just have to be aware of what boundaries you have to draw. And not you, but you two together, I think, is the biggest thing. And that, this is not coming from some master who's figured it out at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I am working on myself at my house. That's the best way I could describe that. Like, I, in business, I can be as direct, and everybody knows me as the guy who say what I say and all these things. I go home. And I turn into a little puss. <laughs> like, I'm scared of my little Mexican wife because I'm afraid she's going to cut me while I sleep. But, like, it is, it's a, it's, a, it's a communication process that I think is the most important. And I think just as you just described, like, if you looked at her and explained how you felt, that's what they want. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the wildest thing for me to, to hear. 
And like the, the moments where I have my most emotional breakdowns, which I had more in the last four years at Triumph than I ever in my life, because it was so pressurized with COVID and profitability and all of those things. Those are the moments that Karina still says, this is when I saw you. Like I saw the real you when you were crying. Like she never saw me cry ever. But when I had an emotional breakdown, because I was freaking out, and she saw that, that's when she felt the most connected to me. And I'm like, I'm not going to cry to you. Like, that's not how it's going to work. But it opened my eyes to realize that's the vulnerability that I'm trying to learn. Mm-hmm. That's it. I'm trying to learn it. And it's going to take a long time for me to feel comfortable. Yeah. The fatherhood aspect of it, that you have uh, three, you said, mm-hmm. two twins and a daughter. How old are they? 13, 13, and 10. 13, 13, 10. Okay, so they're pretty much grown. Yeah, they're little humans. <laughs> humans. They, got a, they got attitudes and everything. Yeah. They're involved in, like, sports. and, and they're, playing, they're having a football game right now. Yeah. So I had to turn off my phone because I'm getting texts up the wazoo. So. Yeah. So what's that been like, not trying to miss anything, the the events, the the uh, the little things, just trying to be, you know, while balancing a new business, while – uh, not not balancing up while bal- bal- balancing all the businesses and so on and so forth. I mean, I guess what's that like? I think the point of being present is making sure my clients know that that's what matters the most to me on the front end. Like I've never had someone, an agent, say, "Well, I want this call. You need to cancel." If I say, "Hey, my kid's got a game. I got like I can't do that call today." I think setting the boundary again is this is is the important thing. I've never missed their game unless I've traveled for something like this. There's certain things that, like you said, there's seasons. There's certain things you need to go and do. And looking at them and saying, I'm going to miss your game. I don't want to miss your game, but I need to go do this, is a necessary conversation and a character building type of thing for them. But like you're in the early stages, there's so many different stages that you'll experience. Yeah. The biggest one for us right now is these stupid ass phones. And like dealing with the distraction of the phone and what the phone could be, the scariness of the phone. Like it is, it's a new experience for us that we just started a month ago. Yeah. Karina talked me into it because I was against it to uh, make sure we can connect with them because they're, now they're doing things on their bikes and riding around. And we've already had instances where, you know, Drake shared his number on a video game. And all of a sudden I see these texts coming in from these wild numbers and I'm reading them going, this is not who you think this is, son. Like, this is a scary some dude in a different country wow. trying to do some things. And he heard me and like he, he he's, I have good kids, but it's terrifying. And, like, it's, it's hard to be present enough to know all of those things. Yeah. I got a, a call from my dad the other day, and he's like, Elon Musk is messaging me. I'm like, Dad, that is not Elon Musk. It's his voice. And I'm like, Dad. That's, that's a whole other level. Like, the AI stuff yeah. is terrifying. Yeah. But, yeah, it's coming. So you've talked to a lot of agency owners. That's a large part of my audience. Yeah. I've grown pretty much an audience full of insurance agents um, and a couple of subscribers from a bunch of goofy viral videos that have gone happen. So, but they're <laughs> going to learn that I talk insurance. Uh, and so what, what do you think uh, holds most insurance agency owners back? Like what's the common, what is a common thing that you keep seeing with your clients and, and how have you, what, what's that advice you've given them? The, the fear and the stories they create about their staff. And like they, they, a lot, a lot, most, all feel held hostage by their staff because it is hard to go find someone now that has work ethic and all of those things. But the stories they create in their head about if I do this, then this is going to happen, freezes them and paralyzes them from making a decision. And that's by far the biggest issue right now that I see. Yeah. Accountability for employees because there is a shit ton of entitlement that's coming out of, I'm not going to say the generation right? But it, it's everywhere. And it's, I learned it a lot at Triumph where I had 20 to 27 year old people. And it's a different type of entitlement that I've ever dealt with before. If we're talking about 30 to 40 year olds or 40 to 50 year olds. And it's hard to get over the, the fear that if they leave, the production is going to go down. And as you know, like the VC number terrifies everybody. It's a massive hit to their revenue. Mm-hmm. So they choose not to act and then they feel like they're strangled by it and they can't do anything. And all of a sudden revenue goes down and now they're in the same deadly circle that they can't get out of. Yeah. All because they weren't proactive in like looking for their replacements. Like in, your, like in my mind, every day I'm like, someone's going to quit or get fired. Right. Every right. single day I'm like, someone's going to quit or get fired. 
today's going to be the day. And then if it doesn't happen, I'm like, cool. You know, yes, like, and I'll say, like, what do you, say the biggest issue is you need people, right? Yeah, I need people. Okay, cool. How many hours do you spend a day on recruiting? Not none. But what are we doing? Yeah. Like, if that's our biggest need, spend, if you spend, if you, if you say to yourself, I'm going to spend 60 full minutes on recruiting, 15 minutes into it, you'd be like, oh, I'm supposed to do now. Like, it's, they don't have enough things to do proactively. So yeah. they just sit there. Yep. Yeah. That's definitely staffing and marketing. I think it was Slocum that told me that. It's just like staffing and marketing. Yep. It's be always going to be the problems. Yep. <sighs> the Everyone thinks you can go find a new lead company and all of a sudden the leads are going to be better. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it might be. They give you the good leads like front at end. First. Like, <laughs> yeah, at first. Yeah, first. And they go to crap. Talk about the standard. You know, this is something that you're putting a lot into. Mm-hmm. I mean, to sell to sell your second business that you put your heart, sweat, and tears into to create this, yeah. you know, yeah. talk about it. Yeah, so it's evolved and re-evolved and all these things. So, and we, when we talk about wrapping the God frame around a business, the, I, I gave you a draft, right? I printed 100 books before that draft ever got created. Like, I was ready to go. I was ready to launch. I have them in my office. Some people have them. And, but there was like the most subtle reference to God in the book. And it, I knew that it didn't feel right, but I didn't know no. And then I heard that I had to redo the whole thing. And so like one day I typed out that whole thing that I gave you. Obviously it needs to look prettier. Um, and it's changed the whole feeling around it, which I continue to ask for, give me some sort of guidance, give me some sort of, not sign, but like I need to know what I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to do this because there's a fear inside of me that it's not acceptable to talk about that stuff. Mm-hmm. And even in the book, I think I say like it's now it's time to talk about the taboo topic, God. Like what are we gonna do? And I'm fearful of putting myself out there to say this is who I am and this is what I believe and this is my conviction because you're gonna get judged and people are gonna go that can't be applied to business. You alienate part of your business right. and stuff like that. And like, I feel okay and secure in saying, I'm going to talk to people who want to talk to me and that's okay. And it doesn't have to be this gazillion dollar business. I don't need coaches underneath me and all these massive events and all those things. Maybe that comes. I don't know. Who's going to tell me? And like, I'm just going to move when I feel like it's time. And, and I think it is time now. Like the, the, the draft that I give you, I feel more secure with that than I ever have. We're filming a movie where they're following me around and like showing my family and showing me work on all those things because it's all going to be applicable inside that book. I just want to be able to help people, men or women, feel 100% secure in all of those areas. And it's not like I'm some sort of therapist that can help them in their marriage. But I can say, look, man, like I, there's a guy in California, shout out to him if he sees this. He's, I'll probably butcher his age. I'm going to say 75. I could be wrong. If he's, if he's younger than that, I'm sorry, dog. Um, he started giving his wife notes a year ago, a year and a half ago when he started coaching with me. And he stopped coaching like six months in because California is a shit show. Yeah. And he texted me like a month ago. I want you to know I still give my wife notes every single day. And Peggy absolutely loves them every single day. Hmm. Like that's, I get goosebumps saying it. That's the reason I want to do it. Like that's super cool. And like I don't have to hear from Peggy. I just want to know that that's being done. And like that's a man who is standing on power. And his wife now at 75 or whatever age he is, please be 75, is desiring him again. That's dope. Yeah. Oh, that's powerful. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I, I, when you post that thing recently and you said it's all connected, it's like I'm going to start holding people accountable. I'm not going to, I guess, not the word. I don't know if pussyfoot's the word. Like I'm not going to sugarcoat yeah. my, my standards and I'm going to, like this is it like you're, you're either in or you're out right and I think it spoke to me because even someone like me where a lot of people would probably perceive that physically like I go to the gym but I'm not jacked <laughs> you know I know where I'm screwing up with my diet me too. I know where I'm screwing up when I miss my workouts when I sleep in versus waking up early um I know I'm screwing up when I'm not going to sleep on time. Mm-hmm. And I think what you said spoke to me because I think people are afraid to hold other people accountable when they know that they're not doing Bingo. The work. That's it. Yeah. And that and that in my check in forms with every single agent, they, they'll give me the topics they want to discuss. At the very bottom it says, Did you help hold yourself one hundred percent accountable? Is no all the time. But they don't want to talk about it. And 
their teams know when they're not real. And that's the biggest part. Like the authentic conversation that you can have with your team when they realize that you're being true, it's a whole different game. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they need to be fit. You don't want to be jacked and be a bodybuilder, but you got to be aware of how you present yourself. And if you come in and, I mean, it happens all the time. You come in and you're a male and you're talking shit about your wife because she did this, this, and this, that feeds into their, in their mind. He doesn't respect his wife. Mm -hmm. Or a, a female comes and talks shit about her husband, same thing. Like, they're not aware of the effect all of these things can have on the business, yeah. which they're all focused on. Yeah, I was just telling my sales manager last week that you have to develop yourself. You have to become a person uh, of success, and people can smell when you're not working on yourself or if you're lacking, like, in, a, in an area. And then I use me as an example. I'm like, how would you feel about me if we're out to lunch and the waitress comes up, takes my order, and then she turns around, she walks away, and I'm like, damn that booty you know like whatever it is right how would you feel about me knowing that i've got this wedding ring and i got a wife and a kid at home it's like you probably lose respect for me right right and it's it's not the same as not developing yourself but it's the same like concept it's like if you're not working on yourself you're not giving other people room to grow i think yeah that makes sense i mean it's standing on your integrity and your character and being secure in that. Someone said something once that said, like, the most powerful man in the room is the person has, the man who has nothing to hide. Like, so if you have no lies and you're not, everyone lies a little bit. Everyone has these little lies. If you can just strive to not do that, there's nothing for you to fear. Yeah. Because there's nothing in the backside that's going to come surprise you. And, like, I I heard that 2017, 18. The man who, the most powerful man in the room is the man who has nothing to hide. So, Why is it so hard to share the hard stuff while we're in the storm? So you told me 2023 was one of the hardest years. I would have never known that. I know. And, like, I was... And I'm, I'm asking myself that same question. It, I, I'm hoping you have an answer, too. I don't, I don't I, have an answer. I don't I'm trying answer to learn. Either. I'm trying to learn. And, like, I am the guy... I'm an introvert by far. Like, I'll go back to this casino and go to bed because I don't want to talk to nobody. But that's just who I am. And I also don't post on social. And, like, I... I there are people, as you know, and we both know, where there's things posted and you're like, what the fuck? Like, no. Like, we know what's going on in the real, but you're posting these, these happy-go-lucky things. I think it's just, I have, you wouldn't know about 23 because I didn't want anybody to know. And that is good and bad, I guess. And that, that includes my wife and my kids. Like, no one knew that I was on the verge of, I wanted to kill myself at points because it was so much pressure mm -hmm. of 30 employees and 400 members and I can't pay the bill of the studio because it's not, I mean, everything's sold out. It's just a matter of the business scale itself wasn't there. And I was blessed to sell the agencies and sell follow-up tool to fund this thing. Right. Which is why you see so many studios gone. I mean, fuck, in Vegas, I used to come to all these studios, they're gone. Yeah. So, Where well, you go to True Fusion. True Fusion's yeah, like, like the last of a dying yes, breed, I yeah. guess. It's a hard business to be in. But I also believe, and I believe this now, and I think you'll see this from me as I share those things on Facebook, there's power in admitting what's going on because people can, can connect to that. Mm -hmm. And that's what the standard, I think, is going to do on a different level because I can look at someone on a Zoom call, not in person, but on a Zoom call and explain what I went through in 23 with my wife, and they're going to go, yeah, I, I, I feel like I felt, felt like that before, or I understand mm -hmm. that. And that's where we can connect on a different level. I can't connect all the time on someone about insurance policies, but I can make a connection on, yeah, I screwed up really bad, and I almost ruined my marriage. Mm -hmm. because I wasn't paying attention like I should have been to my wife. I did not cheat on my wife. But I, I simply was so focused on growing this business. And she was over here saying, why aren't you focused on me? And I was saying, I got to make sure we can survive, which is hyperbolic, right? Mm -hmm. We know we got money in the bank. Everything's fine. But it's ego. It's a game. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a game. You don't want to admit failure either. Yeah. Like, that was the scariest part of the whole thing. Like, am I going to fail? And it wasn't even... That thing could cash flow completely fine, but I chose to be egotistical and take out an SBA loan for three years instead of extending it like I should have because I'll, I'll be fine. I got the money. It would cash flow fine if I would have did a normal business loan. But I put myself in this container of stress with a stupid decision. That's not, I mean, it's not always wrong because it kind of gives you like a little, you know, like 
I'm going to make this happen kind yeah. of mentality, but not at the cost of you got to like, handle the stress better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it almost cost me everything. It's not any one particular category that's, that's helped you in any more than the other. I feel like when you work out, your endorphins are good, which is actually, in retrospect, it's kind of shocking that the gym community is the most like they don't care for your success because you would think like we're working out we got endorphins we can all win but i guess that's not the case well, yeah 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 <laughs> but i don't know there, bro. <laughs> yeah but uh i know that when i i know it's all connected but i've got to have my workouts it's my sanctuary it's like it's what like recalibrates my mind i know the the rock talks about that he's like how do i fight jet lag i go straight to the gym and yeah. That guy's a psychopath. I don't know how yeah. he does it. He has billions of dollars. He can work all day at once. Yeah. That's he it. flies his gyms out. Right. Yeah, yeah, psychopath. Yeah, yeah. I guess what's the most rewarding area? Is, is it just focusing on your faith? Like that's, that's, that is now. that's, yeah. Never been that way. So like I was, I grew up in Lutheran church, grade school, went to high school, Lutheran, private schools. Got excommunicated from my church when I was 18 because I did not put my cash in the envelope that like tracked my number that gave them enough offering to like keep me as part of the congregation. And that was, like, the end of church for me. So, like, organized religion, not organized religion, but organized church was not my thing. So from 18 to, you know, I met Karina when I was 26, and she wanted to go to church. So, like, I started to go back. We actually went to a church in Fort Wayne to get married, and we had to go through, like, the pastor process. And he said I was going to fight it. Like, I wanted to fight him, apparently, with the way I looked. Like, my face turned red because he, he questioned if I was real with him. It was bad. And... Ultimately, I would never admit or talk about Jesus or talk about God because I didn't feel convicted enough inside of it. And all it took was me opening up the possibility that I could hear him. And like I said, July 30th of last year is when I started. And ever since, I cannot wait. And even not, it's not just the morning. Sometimes I'll feel like, all right, I need a prayer stack, which is just me basically following a process of how to pray. And I need that conversation sometimes to get me through whatever I'm dealing with or find an answer to something maybe I was looking for. Yeah. By far. It's number one for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, I'm good at stacking a few habits, but it's all about the, but <clears throat> sticking to certain habits has definitely certainly been a challenge. Yeah. Like, I've till this day haven't finished 75 hard. Yeah. <laughs> Started it like three times. Yeah. That's a very difficult challenge. Failed every single time. Especially when it's 17,000 degrees outside here. Yeah. <laughs> like, you melt. Well, for me, it's like the st I fail, I'd fail over the stupid things. Like, I could do the workouts. I could drink the water. It was the, the reading of the book. It was the, the having a drink here and there. Yeah. It's, it's like you go I'm like, go to a restaurant, I'm like, damn, a beer sounds so good right yeah, now. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. the little stupid ones. Yeah. Well, sounds like you should start again. I know. I need to. And well, I appreciate. Yeah, I remember. I, I said you would. You would call me out about the uh, cold plunge. You'd be like, "You did one minute, or like do two now, or do three, like you know." And then I'm over here like, "Yeah, this guy's pretty intense." You, you know? did seventy. You said like half seventy five hard, and I said, "No, that doesn't count." Yeah, I like kind of created my own, you and did. I just, I didn't even stick to it. You know? I didn't even <laughs> stick to it. So I know my opportunities. Sometimes I feel like just stopping everything. Not stopping, but like. Stop going so hard on all these different things. I don't know when I'm going to – every year I like to challenge myself and do something stupid and crazy. Mm -hmm. Like last couple of years it was like agency one, agency two, agency three. Let's buy an investment property and turn it into an Airbnb. Um, this year it's uh, – and then the next year it was let's buy an agency in Oregon. <laughs> I've never stepped foot in Oregon. What do you mean by an agency yeah. in Oregon? And then this year it was let's start a community. Let's start the insurance creators. And then every year I notice I do something crazy and then it takes me away from some of the things that have been heavy on my heart to like actually do, like yeah. actually read the Bible, actually read the Quran, get closer to God. I, I keep doing these maintenance. I mean, everything you described is in production. These business, 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 business. Yeah. And like that maybe your challenge to yourself is to pick one of the other things. Yeah. And to maybe even just get dialed into my fitness and just right. just prove that i don't know maybe go extreme as signing up for a body bodybuilding show or something you, you know get in the speedo bro so i know right <laughs> so <laughs> you can, you can, my wife's up there so she'll, she'll help you get up there yeah she she does their shows but i i definitely feel it called to my heart and at some point i'm gonna have to you know take time off to travel or do bodybuilding or <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know, yeah. but I keep feeling like I keep having to build, grow this influence, grow this influence, 
um, absolutely dominate and then from there keep figuring it out but I think you're right it's it, a lot of things has been business but it, yeah. I think it comes from also not having much growing right. up and right. the job's not finished kind of mentality where yep. it's like my mom's not retired yet so yeah uh, certainly I can dial in these habits but it is hard it's, hard. it's very hard <laughs> it's very hard like I said we look for production yeah. So like, it, but I can, I think you also know this, like the better you feel, the more production that will come. Yes. Every time. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I'll say that being is my number one thing that I'm focused on right now, but I also know if my body falls off, the rest of it is done. Yes. That's the biggest well, thing. You know what else though? If your wife is mad at you, everything is done. Right, like that too. nothing <laughs> yeah. works. Yeah. Like there's this pit in your stomach and it's just like, this is not good. Right. You know, <laughs> like right. no, I can't even focus it's on chaos. anything else. So the wife has to be good. And, but your body good. brings confidence with your wife too. Yes. That's the thing. Like it's, especially my wife. Like I, I have to compete with her, who's a professional bodybuilder and like all of these things in this world. The feeling of self-worth is something I battle with all the time. Like she is around all these massive bodybuilders and like all, she's, I mean, she reassures me in all these things. But it's natural to go, I'm not on that level. Mm-hmm. So like for me, for 24, I pre-purchased a fitness photo shoot then in December. I got to get my shit in gear, bro. Yeah, because like that's paid for, ready to go, and it's the end of the month, and she she can't wait. She don't care what I look like, but here in my head, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. God mode, I got <laughs> <my> Wolverine on, <laughs> gotta, you know. Hire my coach, get my programming done, like all of those things, because I want to be prepared for it. But it's it's more of a gift for us. Mm-hmm. And, but body obviously is leading me to that that yeah. event. It's good to give yourself deadlines. <sighs> I I have to do it, otherwise I can't do it. Yeah. Those are two things that have been heavy on my heart. It's it's spiritual journey. It's the sometimes I just want to just put my agency on autopilot for like a month or two and just go travel, go experience stuff, which I do. I do a decent job of traveling. And then the other one is just physically challenge myself. Like what's something that I can do that's way out of my comfort zone and yeah. you know, just give me this shock. Prove I still got it. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so my challenge for 25 for me in balance is to go on. Right now we do a date night a week, pretty religiously, but to do two date two date nights a week, and then one week away per quarter with just me and Karina. So five days. So like that's essentially what Garrett's giving me to try to attack. So trying to strategically plan that out, and like if we think about how we do things, I'm looking at my calendar, <laughs> looking at the appointments and the business stuff to try to allocate around. When in reality. I should be putting this stuff first. Mm-hmm. And that's hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard to go, I'm going to go on this trip this week. Business does not matter. This marriage has to matter more than this business. Yeah. And for us in our brains, it's so hard to do. But it's yeah. necessary. Otherwise, there will be no business. You know, one thing I respect about you is you're consciously aware of all these areas that you have to work on to show up and be your best self. Because I have a hard time <clears throat> respecting, like, I pick and choose the qualities that I respect in people. Mm-hmm. You know, there's somebody that could be a killer in business, killer in sales. And then there's somebody that could be a great father, but it's like the wife is a breadwinner or the wife is, you know, struggling to make ends meet, you know. And I do think that somebody somebody's qualified to teach on something, but hardly ever do you do you meet people where it's like I respect this person for what they're trying to do in all these different areas. And so, you know. That's the key word, trying over and over and over and over again. Like there's no finish line to all of this stuff. And it's, everyone's like, oh my God, you got it all together. <laughs> like you said, like you didn't know in yeah. 23 was chaos for us. But like, you don't have to know that. As long as I'm truthful about it and I can talk about it, then that's the realness of it. But it's trying every single day, bro. Yeah. You know what's interesting for me? I'd love to hear your perspective on this. You got somebody like Kobe Bryant. If Kobe doesn't sacrifice being a, I mean, he sounded like he made up a lot of missed ground towards the end of his career Mm -hmm. as far as fatherhood and being a great husband. But during, during his NBA career, like he put it all out on the court and at the sacrifice of his wife and kids and all these other things, like he was obsessed Sometimes I wonder, like, is it possible to become that great without that sacrifice? I don't mm-hmm. think so. I don't think so either. Nope. But, I so. mean, you and I, I get. I bet if you ask Kobe in his grave what he wish he would spent time on, I bet it's the opposite. I bet, now, I bet he's wouldn't be Kobe Bryant though, right? And I bet he wouldn't care now. 
But he wouldn't care now. Yeah. Right. He wouldn't be on the helicopter. But like, yeah, that that's but we we that's 2020. Like we can, we can always look back and see it. Yeah. But like that's what I want to remind myself of. Like these these times with the kids. Like the the country song, you're gonna miss this. Like me and Karina joke about it all the time when we're in chaos, and you probably will need to too as she's two months, and then when she hits two years. You're gonna miss it, but you're not gonna miss it in the middle of all of that stuff. Yeah. But like you'd want to go back to that so bad. Yeah. And no meeting, no call, no money, no bonus, is is gonna replicate that. Somebody said recently that in the midst of your chaos of the stuff that you're going through, if you can just, it's like if you had a time machine to go back into this exact moment, and but you're in the future and you know how many people you're going to be able to help with this exact thing that you're going through, you're going to look at it a little bit differently. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and so yeah. you become more, a little bit more uh, grateful that, oh, this is happening for me because I have to, I, I have to be able to teach somebody, right. you know, right. through this storm. And so we don't have to stress out on, you know, during those, during those storms so much. Yeah. I think we do a very bad job of being present. Yeah. Like it's, the phones is obviously the biggest issue for everybody. Oh, one million percent. But like the, the stories of what we can be on social media. Social media is important. Like it's, it's part of the game and it's necessary for business sometimes. Like for Instagram. Last year I did what a video every single day on Instagram. It was at, by day 32 I was like, what the fuck did I just sign myself up for? But I did 365 videos in a row and now I'm off of Instagram. I'm done. But I was only on there for Triumph. Like I knew it was a business requirement for me to grow this, this brand. Yeah. But I'm done now. I don't want to be on that anymore. But like as I told you, the kids having phones, we have a phone locker at our house where there's a charger and a key that we're not doing a good job of implementing, but I bought it yeah. <laughs> with the intention of using this thing and locking these things up because I want them to, I don't want them to be like I was when I was a kid. And that's what we always get in the bad habit, in my opinion, of saying, well, when I was a kid, we did this. Because my parents said the same shit, but it's, I always said it's different now. And our kids' lives are different than ours were back then. So I want them to live in their present life, which is what it is. But I can see and feel the lack of social skills because of these phones and these computers and stuff. And it's, yeah. it's hard to watch as a dad because it's our job to create little successful people. And and when I have to go to order dinner and they're like looking at it, I'm like, you're not gonna eat unless oh, you speak, bro. Like, man, <laughs> I don't no. know what to tell you, but like every child is like that now. I know. Unless they're just being guided to have to speak. My kids know they have to speak now. Like, they're not going to get food. They're not going to get drinks unless they speak. But it is a craziness to watch other parents just speak for them. And I'm like, that kid's got to learn to talk to adults, man. Like, let that kid talk. Yeah. It's a, it's scary. Yeah. I wonder how we're going to have to navigate those territories. You got a so, while. Yeah. Just enjoy it. I, got, I know. I know. Totally, totally, totally enjoying it yeah, every little minute. It's and amazing. I never teared up for no reason at all so much in my life. It's, it's, it's the best. Like, she's like, my baby smiles at me. I'm <laughs> Dude, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> so, just wait, man. Well, look, man, I got one last question to ask you. But before I do, just want to acknowledge you again for the work that you're doing. Indirectly, you are impacting people in ways that you probably don't realize it just by being who you are, um, the standards that you set. And I think like you hold yourself I think you're so passionate about this movement because you hold yourself to such a high standard that you can't help but want to hold other people to the same standards. And like you, yeah. and so I know that there's deep, deep meaning and passion there. But uh, just want to acknowledge you for that. You. And the last question I have for you are, it's funny, I couldn't wait to ask this question because, you know, because of what you're building. The definition of A1 is of the highest standards, of the highest qualities. And I like to ask every guest, what are three of the standards that you live your life by? Jesus follower is number one now for me. Being a proper husband is the second one for me. And being a proper father. And when I say proper, proper in my mind is the same thing as the standard. Like when I look at, and I, I look at how my dad raised me and I want to live up to that. And like, I look back at my childhood and, and him being an entrepreneur and having all these businesses. Yeah, he was gone a lot, but when he was with us, he was there. Mm. And when he was with my mom, he was there, even though I got divorced. But like when I, what I witnessed as a kid, that's what I want to replicate for my kids. Mm. And like, I want, I know that if they are in need or they want to be transparent, they'll say it. And like, that's my biggest success in my opinion. Because I, I've talked to them many times because they are 13. They're going into some crazy shit now. And 
it's about to get real. Yeah. And I want them to come to me. Do you want to try drugs? Man, we can try them together if we have to, but I don't want you to try them with nobody else. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's just do it together. We can figure this out. I don't need you out in the, <laughs> yeah. in the world right. doing this. You want to eat that mushroom, man? Let's eat it together and see what happens. But, like, it, it's – and that's a joke. I don't want them to eat mushrooms. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I, I want to just be the best version of myself, and I did not know that I couldn't be that until January or July 30th of last year without that. Okay. Like, that's that shifted my perspective 180 degrees. Love it, man. Yeah. How can everybody find you if they wanted to connect with you? You're not on Instagram no more, so how do they find you on <laughs> it's, Facebook? It's still there. It's just <laughs> ghosted. So yeah. at, at Triumph Justin is my, my Instagram handle. But in reality, createyourstandard.com is going to be the, the website that's going to launch. Um, you can find me on Facebook all the time. Just It's my wife and my account, Justin and Karina. When are you launching the standard? <laughs> October 1st. October 1st? Yeah. That'll be right around the time that this is released, I believe. Right. So might even be a couple weeks into October, so jump right in. Yeah, so I'll start doing interviews October 1st. I'm going to interview everyone to make sure that they are completely aware of how this thing's going to work. So there's not going to be a way to buy online and just join. Yeah. I'm going to be very specific to make sure that I can help the people the correct way. Yeah, Yeah. certainly. Certainly. Well, if you guys got some value, give give Justin a follow. And if you guys got some value, you got to do the the whole shebang got to like follow subscribe and if you tuned in this far thank you guys so much for watching till next time peace